Hello, Manila, Philippines! It feels so good to say that I love this country. The locals here are the friendliest people on earth. I absolutely love my Filipinos so much so I married one. We are back in my motherland. Yeah. The only thing is, is that my Filipinos can't pronounce my name right. It's Rocio, not Rosho. <laughs> And when in Manila, guys, the best way to experience a culture is eat authentic Filipino street food. For that video will be posted tomorrow. Instead, in today's video, we're gonna be going to the oldest Chinatown in the world. And we're going to eat some yummy Chinese Filipino food. Let's go. Woo! We are staying at the Sheraton Manila Hotel where we get this awesome view of planes landing and taking off. Plus, we get this two-story room. Honestly, I didn't even know Sheraton's made these types of rooms. When we checked in, the kids were so surprised. Oh. Oh, two stories? Two stories? What? Two stories? What? No way. Yeah. Guys, have your own cave. No way. <gasps> what? You don't need so many sneaky stuff over here. And was this a surprise? Yes. What? Did you know? By the way, unfortunately, Nia got food poisoning, poor thing. So I'm gonna be staying in with her. But no worries, guys. The boys are gonna take it from here. Bye. I love you, Bye, love you guys. All right, guys, we're going to miss the girl, but it's another father and son vlog day. Let's go, baby. But first, we got to go through Manila traffic. So some quick personal facts. I was born about two to three hours away from here from a town called San Fernando, Pampanga. I was raised by my grandparents when I was about eight and a half years old. That's when I flew out to California. I am what they call a Kapampangan. So I speak that dialect. And then this guy's name is Knox. So Knox means in Filipino slang, like, oh my goodness, or oh, that's cool, or oh, amazing. Wow. And if you add the word Naman, so if you go Knox Naman, you're like, wow. wow. Like you hit like the, Jackpot. jackpot or you scored the last goal or the last touchdown or the last basket. Next, Naman. And so although I was born here, I am no food expert. So we are hiring a food expert that's gonna help us along this journey. I think New York is a concrete jungle. Well, this is the mother land of concrete jungles. Definitely one of the most overcrowded city I've ever been to, but also populated by the most friendliest locals here on Someone earth. Someone caused an accident, oh no. 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 traffic. That's traffic on top of traffic. Probably gonna take us roughly 40, 50 minutes to get to Binondo Church, but uh, if there was no traffic, it'll probably take, I don't know, a third of that. But we are going on a weekday during rush hour. Probably not a good idea. Traffic is very similar to Vietnam. However, there's a lot more cars here and trucks, so there's more pollution. Or in Vietnam, they're just motorbikes, less pollution. But uh, the amount of traffic, about the same, or even worse actually. How much is a jeepy now? 11 or 12 pesos. 11 or 12 pesos. For how long? 
just about uh, two maximum of three kilometers three. wow that's about 20 cents for a ride three kilometers i think when i was a kid that was probably like a penny streets of manila are definitely filled with power lines see all the power lines buddy and even though i've lived here for nine years i have never been to binondo oldest chinatown on planet earth a jolly bee that's pretty cool look at all these dragons this is the place you're going oh binondo Six hundred and seventy. Three hundred. Okay. Three hundred, sir. Thank you, Pop. Thank you, sir. Salamat, Pop. Walang anuman. Welcome to Binondo, the oldest Chinatown in the world, baby. Oh. Now it's time to find our tour guide. I don't know what our tour guide looks like. Sorry, I'm a little surprised. Oh no, thank you. I think that's him, not. John? Yeah. Hi. Nice to meet you. Great to, nice meet, to meet you. Meet you. Hi, Pleasure. Yeah, What's your name? Knox. Knox. Like right. Knox Naman. <laughs> <laughs> and how do, you, how do you pronounce your name? Jian. G so Jian. Jian. I like yes, that. Yes, Jian. Yes. Yeah. We're uh, hungry. We didn't eat breakfast for this. Good, good, yes, good, good. Yes. So I only have one rule in my tours, and that is you have to take a bite of everything that we have on the menu. Because you can't say you don't like something unless you've actually taken a bite. Right? He's good at that. Yeah. He's good at that. He'll take good. a bite out of him. Let's proceed. Let's go. Let's All right. go. All right. Quick introduction. Uh, first off, welcome to uh, the Philippines Chinatown, uh, more commonly known as Binondo. And we're going to be having what I call a dim sum tour. If you take a look at the root word dim sum, it comes from the Cantonese word for snack. So we're having not necessarily just Chinese food, but we're having snack foods that are uniquely found uh, or primarily originated in this area of the Philippines, in, in the Philippines' Chinatown of Binondo. I was gonna ask, uh, am I pronouncing it right, Rocio? What's that? Rocio. Rocio, not Rocio. Yeah, Filipinos <laughs> call it Rocio, uh -huh. but it's actually Rocio. Ah, Rocio. Yeah. Uh, Rocio. Yeah. I was gonna ask her if it, you're the start of your adventure in the Philippines, and I was gonna suggest like maybe on your way back from the islands, we could do the tours if Mio was still. Oh, really yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. Look at all these wires. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing that people always notice, yeah. Because the thing is, this place gets flooded quite a lot. Yeah. And plus, the old school way was putting the wires just all overhead. Ooh, look at all these fruits. This is beautiful. That fruit stand smells so good. So hungry. I am hungry, too. Our first stop. You excited? Yeah. I wonder what this is, the first one. Oh, yeah. Our first meal is fresh lumpia. Now, lumpia is generic term for anything that comes wrapped in a wrapper. For those from the West, generally, you would describe it similar to either a spring roll or egg roll. Because it's both. It's either deep fried or not. We're having the not deep fried version. That's why we call it fresh. So it won't be crispy. It will be It would more or less remind you of a burrito. I'm getting hungry. So generally, what Filipinos are used to in terms of fresh lumpia would be the wrapper would be similar to like a crepe, a very thin crepe. But here, their wrapper is similar to what we use when we deep fry a regular lumpia. But it's not fried. Oh, wow, I'm excited. Let's go, baby, let's go. So you'll see the, the big pot over there is shredded cabbage, carrots, tofu, uh, a bit of corn. And then they put it into the wrapper uh, with a bit of uh, lettuce. And then the powder that they're putting on the wrapper is powdered peanuts, brown sugar and dried seaweed so the seaweed adds in an umami kick to the lumpia oh and this, this is, is it. the fresh lumpia of binondo wow i know you guys are hungry so come oh, on dig yeah. in one each oh, here's yeah. yours definitely kind of looks like a burrito it smells so good oh i mentioned i forgot to mention they also put bits of fried noodles oh, do you have egg in here Sorry. oh wow do you have egg in here ah tofu Oh, tofu. Oh, cool. I think it's just like egg. Crunchy on the inside, very peanutty. If I put this 
sauce. This sauce is more like a sweet, savory sauce. The sauce is sweet and savory sauce, so a lot of uh, brown sugar and uh, soy sauce based. So it adds even more umami to the to the dish. You will see that as a uh, general trend in Filipino cuisine. A lot of our dishes have a sweet uh, context to it just because when the Spanish were here, we were basically one big sugar uh, plantation. We were all sugar slaves. Sugar was a flavor agent here in the Philippines. So even the poorest of the poor had access to sugar historically. That's why it uh, plays a big role in our cuisine. So for example, if you were gonna be cooking, you'd be adding like a pinch of salt. In the Philippines, we do the same. Pinch of salt, dash of pepper, and a tablespoon of sugar. Spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Vegetables are really fresh. Kind of have that delicious mix of sweetness and a little bit of saltiness. What do you think, buddy? Oh, it's amazing. I tasted it. The tofu tasted like egg. To add more flavor, I could taste peanuts and sugar, and I could also taste like the cabbage there. It was really flavorful and very savory. Very amazing. Come in, guys. So on, on our first stop, there was no seats. So here, a quick snack, there's some seats where we're gonna finish off our fresh lumpia, get a drink. Our second dish will be here also. So we're in Quick Snack, one of the older restaurants here in Binondo as well. Uh, I've had friends and colleagues that were telling me that they've been coming here since they were like little kids. Oh. Now is eight. Okay, so now that we do have proper seating, we are gonna finish off the lumpia here, the fresh lumpia. Love the freshness, the recipe is excellent. So affordable. This is about 95 pesos, which is about a dollar eighty a US. All you need is one for lunch and you're and you're good to go. Just because it's pretty big. Pretty filling also. If you're a vegetarian, great meal for you. Oh this guy wants a bite. Drop the mic. Rocio, sorry you're missing out. Ooh, look at that. This is the kuchaya. Nice and fluffy. That's beautiful. Wonder how they make this. So let's open one up. There you go. So lots of carrots, lots of uh, green onion, uh, tofu as well. And one of the best parts of this, in my opinion, is the, what they call that, the, the wrapper, the shell itself. It has a nice crisp exterior, but it has a nice uh, chew to it as well. So dig in, guys. Mmm. Really good. Your first bite, it's this nice, soft crunch. The crust is sweet, sweet and crunchy, but it also tastes like breaded dough, very soft. Right away you can taste the sweetness of the... So yeah, so that sweetness once again is, as I mentioned earlier, the our, our love of adding sugar in a lot of stuff, yeah. Great mix of the pork and veggies. It's like an empanada, but with a different taste. It tastes like a sweetened bread. Bread that like with a little bit of sugar on top, but, it, but also like a pastry at the same time. Ten. Delicious mix. The next one is the Oh yeah. How old are you, Jan? I am 34. 34. Yes. A young 34. <laughs> You're pure, pure Filipino, right? Yes, okay. yes, yes. But supposedly I have like uh, Chinese in my blood. Yeah. But that's what that's what I would still consider Filipino. Everyone who's born in the Philippines is Filipino. Because uh, we've had a, a variety of mixes through the centuries, right? Yeah, exactly. We've had like Chinese traders coming to the Philippines. We've had Indian traders coming to the Philippines. Moro traders as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a big mix. So we just heard there's this soup called soup number five. Hopefully we get to try it. And if we do, we'll let you know what it is. What? Wait, is cow pee pee? It is peppermint balls. A symphony, symphony in a suit. Oh, God. <laughs> Have you told Knox what the... Yeah, I just told him right now. <laughs> it's basically a symphony in a suit. So you got a little bit of Mozart, some Be Beethoven in there. Wait, I'm mistaken the, the, the balls for like taro. <laughs> so hopefully we get to try it. Oh, so we're at Dong Bay Dumplings. This is uh, another example of a uh, literal hole in the wall. So l if you didn't know about this place just walking around, you wouldn't even notice that they sell uh, uh, food. So if you uh, take a quick peek inside, you can see them 
hand making all the dumpling wrappers over there. So they do that uh, early in the morning throughout the whole of the day because it's one of their highest selling items on the menu. So you're sure that what you're eating is just made fresh that day. For quite a while, they've been ranked one of the best food places here in, in Binondo and TripAdvisor. Since the pandemic, they've just been a takeout counter now. So I believe it just adds to the whole effect of their, uh, their food. Like it's so good that people don't mind eating it standing at the side of the road. <laughs> gotcha. Here we are, nice and fresh. Wow. Still steaming hot. Whoa. Steaming hot. It's a mixture of vinegar. The solid part is uh, what they call that garlic, a bit of soy sauce. Let's put the spice here on the side. So yeah, we're having one of their uh, most famous items on the menu, which is the pork and leek. Nice. Uh, chewy wrapper. I love the wrapper as well. It's one of my favorite dumpling wrappers. Careful, it's really hot. Oh, it's steaming hot. See that? So you might wanna. Oh, oh, oh. Hot. Oh, it's good. That is delicious. Right? The vinegar soy mix. Oh my goodness. Definitely a nice chew to it. And that's super bready. So savory, so delicious. So much flavors in my Definitely mouth. Definitely a lot of flavor. So good. Love the vinegar. So there's another one that's better than this. You would say? Mm, top. Top. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Comment down below where you think uh, there's better dumplings here in Chinatown. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> but the way they make the wrapper is absolutely amazing. So that was about three. Uh, that was about three dollars and fifty cents, which is two hundred pesos, and there's about a dozen in there. Wow, that was so good. That was excellent. So that's three dishes down. Okay, so next we're gonna walk a little bit, all right, and then you'll be able to get more of a sense of the surroundings of uh, Binondo Chinatown. So we are just walking the streets of Binondo, walking off this calories. We just ate over three dishes down, and I don't know how many more to go. But uh, something I really noticed here, the streets are really super clean. Yeah, especially with uh, this mayor, because he grew up from the streets. His main campaign was to really like, uh, clean up the streets as much as possible. So it's showing quite well, right? There's no, there's no stuff on the street. No, yeah. I haven't seen it. This is one of the things that I enjoy about here in Chinatown. It's the, the mixture of East and West, as you can see, the way they're worshipping is very much Buddhism, right? You have the, the incense sticks. At the bottom of the cross, you'll see there, there's like carved half-moon wooden things, which you actually use get answers from divinity. Like, you shake it, and depending on how it lands, it's a yes, no, or try again. Uh, but they're all worshipping a Christian cross. So back when the Spanish first arrived here in the Philippines, uh, one of the things that they did spread the Christian faith, Catholic faith in particular, and everyone had to convert. You converted or they killed you, basically. Yeah. So what I like about this, they adapted their ways that they used to worship in Buddhism, and it's mixed with Christianity. And it's just so cool looking at it like that. So the place we just saw, it's not a restaurant, it's like a takeout stall. And it looks like they sell many different types of Chinese food, but their most famous one is the fried chopao. I remember eating this as a kid here. A lot of meat, very generous with the meat, super fresh. Feels like it's just right out of the oven. Pork is mixed in well with the sauce. And you also have this crunchy flavor once you bite into that pork. And I believe that's water chestnut. That's what I'm tasting. What I've noticed is that you don't need sauce. So here, it's, all the sauce is already in here. For each of this, it's about 60 cents, guys. If you get three of these in this kind of thing, it'd be like, like $30. Yep. <laughs> all right, guys, four meals down, but Gian said that's only the appetizers. <laughs> and I'm already stuffed. So let's move on to the next. And that would be the main dish. Yes, it's main dishes. The main dishes, okay. <laughs> Not main dish, main dishes. So let's go. Corn silk, the hair from corn, right? So they, they boiled that up as a tea supposed to be, uh, it, it helps cure a lot of different diseases. 
these are saba bananas. This is the local variety of banana. We we call I describe it like a cooking banana. It's fairly similar to a plantain. Fun fact: the second oldest Chinatown in the world is actually in the U.S. The one in San Francisco. There's a step-by-step -step way to uh, eat your dish later on. Let me walk you through it. So we are in Masuki Mami. So they've been here for decades and decades and decades, pre-World War II. They've been uh, serving food since 1930. So this is Mami, M-A-M-I. I want you to try the soup Please first. Explain that soup. Super strong, like salty yeah. and chickeny, like that chicken. Yeah, it is super strong. But the thing is, that's just the first layer. This next, now you dunk half of that into your soup and then try the soup again. And it's just regular soy sauce? No, or? no, no, no. That's their special house sauce. So it's a special house sauce, not just any regular soy sauce. The the first layer was pretty strong. It was a weird taste. Very strong and bland at the same time. So now that we've mixed in their special house sauce, let's see how it tastes. Now we're just tasting the soup right now. Okay, now that mixed in really well, that sweetness. Now it's sweeter. Tastes more like soy sauce, but like Teriyaki. Yeah, there's definitely a deeper, more complex umami to it. Now to finish it, you add a scoop of uh, green onions. So that uh, completes the flavor profile of the soup. It adds a freshness towards the end of the... Oh, okay. That definitely completes it. Mmm. texture is just right. Okay. Now let me pair it with the shopao. Ginormous shopao compared to the fried shopao we had. So you got the pork and salty egg. Man, it's a good pairing with the mommy. Oh, wow. Right? Wow, no. Amazing. 10, 1 million out of 10. The sauce, guys. The sauce. This is the secret ingredient right here. It's what makes it so savory and delicious. That's good. That's a perfect combination. How much is this all together? Uh, six bucks. We were just in Singapore, so... Singapore is super expensive. And then, if you're brave enough, uh, we'll have chicken feet as well. Chicken feet. Remember what he said? You have only one rule, Nox. You have really to enjoy it. Yes. Y'all try. Yeah. Ooh, stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that and also soup number five. Hopefully, it's available so Nox here can devour it. Oh, no. <laughs> I'll grow a second one. <laughs> Let's go over here. What is that? That's grass root. And then once again, you boil it for supposedly medicinal purposes. <laughs> so if you want to do your Christmas shopping while in the Philippines, Binondo is the place to be. This is where you buy things in bulk for a lot cheaper. Because a lot of uh, companies are here. Their, their warehouses are in this general area. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we probably passed like 30 different banks all around. Yeah, I noticed that. Right? Just to give you an idea of how much money is being traded all around in this area. So it might seem so chaotic, but there's a balance to the chaos all over here. So this is it right here? Yeah. We're fourth in line. Oh, okay. If we were here on a weekend, I mean, good luck. You have to line up at the right around like 10 just to be able to get a seat at lunchtime. Uh, air conditioning. Feels so good in here. Double, they're sold out. No chicken feet? No chicken feet. Oh, no it's chicken. all sold out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to try it. So, uh, it's the dip that we will eat the, the next few dishes with. So, you get uh, the local lime, which is calamansi, right here. Squeeze it in. This one is the chili oil, chili paste. So it's a, this is bean curd roll, the, the inside pork and shrimp sausage. And then this outside coating, this is basically like very, very thin tofu or bean curd. That's why it's called a bean curd roll. Oh no! Oh, okay. Mm. Very lemony, very soy sauce, very tasty. It's a good mix of the pork and shrimp. Yeah, definitely chewy, but you still get that soft. It's not too tough. It pairs really well. That's a 10 out of 10 for me. Very nice dim sum right there. Very nice. So here we have uh, shrimp dumplings. You get it as is, and then you dip it in the same sauce, and enjoy. I like the wrapping. Jelly like wrapping, right? Definitely got that mild start. 
like flavorless taste at the start, but then the dumplings start to melt off. You could taste the dumplings like um, wrap, but you really can at the same time. It's more of like rice paper, and then while it melts off, you can taste the lemony and salting saltiness taste with the shrimp compared really well. And when you have it all together, just a big explosion of flavors. Definitely 10 out of 10. That shrimp, oh, talk about shrimpy goodness. That, that's it right there. I want another one. <laughs> that was really good. Did you finish it now? Oh, no. Now I know why there's a long line outside. Are you disappointed there's no chicken feet here? Yeah, I really wanted to try it for the experience. That was super good, guys. If ever in Benondo, you must go here. Absolutely delicious. And if we're lucky, there's going to be soup number five, guys. <laughs> Miss, available lang po, soup number five. Wala po. Wala. What happened else? Bad news, Dada. No balls for you. <laughs> no bulls balls for you. Maybe next time we'll come back and we'll have it. They've sold out. I guess it's that popular. Or maybe not. I don't know. Okay, so random fun fact. Uh, I mentioned that a lot of merchants set up shop here, right? So this is historically, so for hundreds of years, there was a lot of merchants here. And what is the biggest problem uh, for merchants with warehouses? Fire. Fire. So this is where the early fire uh, brigades started here in the city here. Because if a fire catches on a warehouse and then it jumps from one warehouse to another, a lot of merchants would lose their merchandise. So uh, the earliest fire brigades were set up here. Look around, quite a lot of different fire trucks lined up here. So, and if you look at that um, fire truck over there, it's bright purple. It's uh, donated by the guy who owns this uh, bakery just because purple became his favorite uh, color because the, the purple yam or the ube became his hottest seller. Now I know what these purple trucks are. They're actually fire trucks. I was wondering what they were. That's a good fun fact. That's pretty cool. Cool story. Whoa, what is this? It's a what? Okay. We are in Engbitin. It's a, they call themselves a Chinese deli. Their most iconic one that got them really, really famous is ube hokya. So hopia is a nice, chewy, sweet Filipino Chinese snack. Here in the Philippines, less, uh, more than red bean paste, uh, green bean paste or mung bean paste is something that we've always used to flavor desserts and pastries and all that. Hopia mongo and hopia ube. ube. So these are your uh, desserts for today. There we go. And then let's bring it out. What are we having first? It's the mongo hopia for the green be uh, uh, mung bean. Oh, I remember these. These are so good. These are delicious. I can't really describe it, guys, but this is mm. so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good, guys. Creamy, not too sweet. It has a complex, earthy flavor for sure. So ube is a, a purple yam. It comes from the ground, it's a root crop, it's earthy as well. At the end you can taste like, like yam, but also like very sweet and, and it's very good. So it's basically like the same thing. I cannot describe it. Mm. Feed the beef. That is good. Again, not too sweet, just right. Now the main question becomes, what's your favorite? Mungo or the ube? First one. I would have to say, oh, I think I like the classic one. Because it brings back memory. Yeah, but I don't mind this at all. <laughs> oh, uh, delicious. Go Opia. Go, go. So that was the last stop, guys. But don't forget to tune in for tomorrow's vlog. That's when we do the street food with the whole family and with Gian. We're going to party it up tomorrow. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs>